Summer is one of my favourite times for astronomy. Yes, the nights are shorter, but in June, July and August, which I consider to be the summer months, that's when we're getting warmer weather and it's nice to be outside of an evening. At this time of year, we've got some really prominent constellations and asterisms. And in this video, I'm gonna have a look at a dozen of those with you. And we're gonna start in the northern sky, looking at the circumpolar constellations. And these are the ones that are visible all night long. And then we are gonna move through the east, south and western horizons and have a look at the most prominent constellations in those directions. If what you see in this video intrigues you and you wanna get outside and discover these constellations for yourself, then keep watching to the end and I'll give you an address where you can go and download some sky charts that I've saved specifically for you to go and hunt these views down in your own backyard. Okay, let's jump into looking at the constellations. Now, all the charts I'm showing you are from Sky Safari 6, and they all show the sky at about 10 p.m. in the middle of July, from mid-US latitudes. What they don't show is the moon and planets. So I've moved those off so that if you're watching these in a year or two years time, the stars are still relevant, but the planets wouldn't be, the moon wouldn't be. So we'll leave those off the chart. Okay, let's begin with the circumpolar constellations. These are the ones that are always visible because they are rotating around the North Celestial Pole. And because of that, they are always in the North. So standing outside 10 p.m. in the evening, facing North, and the first star we need to find is Polaris, and that is the Pole Star and it's about midway between the horizon and the zenith. Now the zenith is the part of the sky that's directly overhead, uh, and the horizon obviously is in front of us and we're looking towards the north. So Polaris is the end star for the constellation of Ursa Minor, or the Little Dipper. To the left of the Little Dipper, or west of it, is probably the most recognized constellation of all, and it's the Little Dipper's big brother, the Big Dipper which in the UK is also known as the plough. It's really recognisable, very bright stars, very obvious shape, almost impossible to miss. And then if we go the other side of the Little Dipper, we are looking at the constellation of Cepheus. This, to my mind, looks like a child's drawing of a house. And I think as well, it's a fairly obvious constellation to pick out, although not quite on the same scale as the Big Dipper. And then finally, we've got closer to the horizon, Cassiopeia. That for me is probably the second or third most obvious constellation in the night sky. It's a classic W shape, really bright stars, and again, practically impossible to miss. Okay, so that's the constellations facing north. Let's change our direction 90 degrees and face west. And this time we're gonna use some bright stars to help us identify a couple of constellations. Let's for a moment just jump back to the Big Dipper and we're gonna use the handle of the Big Dipper to arc our way around to the star Arcturus. This is a really bright star, again, hard to miss. It's, it's substantially brighter than the surrounding stars. And this is the base star of the constellation Boötes. I'm not sure I'm nailing that pronunciation, but in terms of seeing this constellation, it's a fairly obvious kite shape. Now, if you carry on that arc past Arcturus, to the next brightest star, and we're hitting the star Spica in Virgo. Again, another very bright star, and Virgo is quite famous for being home to dozens of galaxies. So we can spend a lot of time pointing our telescope in that direction, but when we stand there just looking with the naked eye, Virgo is not a particularly obvious constellation. Okay, let's turn ourselves so that we're now facing due south. And one of the most obvious features we can see at this point is the Milky Way in the background especially if you've got a darker sky, you can see that raking its way up from the horizon. Now, if you're far enough south, the classic constellation that we look for is called the teapot. And actually, it's not a constellation, it's an asterism, which is a, uh, an obvious shape of stars, but not a full constellation. Now, the teapot is part of the constellation of Sagittarius. And because of its location, it is also full of deep space objects, particularly globular clusters and galaxies. The teapot shape is really obvious, 
but if you live in the UK like I do, we're a bit far north and so it barely comes above the horizon even at its highest. But in the mid latitudes of the US, it's, it is low on the horizon, but it's perfectly obvious. And we can use the teapot shape to point to our next bright star. The spout of the teapot points at the bright star Antares. Antares actually means brightest red star. And when you see it for yourself, that's a fairly appropriate name. It is a bright red star. And it's part of the fish hook shape of the constellation of Scorpius. Finally then, let's turn eastwards and we complete our tour of the summer night sky in this direction. Now the first thing you'll notice is an incredibly obvious triangle of three very bright stars. And understandably, that's why this is known as the summer triangle. It's an asterism, it isn't a constellation, but it's a great sight for orientating yourself in the night sky. It's composed of the three bright stars Vega, which is in the constellation of Lyra, Altair, which is in Aquila, and Deneb, which is in Cygnus. Now Lyra is a quirky little constellation. It is fairly obvious when you find this star Vega, very, very bright star, and the constellation itself is a little parallelogram, quite a bit fainter than Vega, but attached to it. It's also home for the famous Ring Nebula, which is well worth a look. Moving on to Cygnus, I think this is one of the brightest and most obvious constellations in the summer sky. It's supposed to be a swan flying overhead, but actually to me it just looks like a long bright cross. And Deneb is the brightest star in that constellation. And then finally we move to Altair uh, in the constellation of Aquila, but that is a fairly faint constellation, it's not obvious one to pick out. But worth knowing nonetheless because we've got that marker star. And that completes our tour of the summer night sky. We've jumped through there from north, west, south and east and we've seen a dozen constellations and asterisms. So if that's inspired you to find these constellations for yourself, just head across to lovethenightsky.com slash summer and you can download the star charts for yourself and a little bit of a guide from me to help you find all of those 12 constellations and asterisms. That's it for this guide. I hope you find it useful. And of course, I wish you clear skies. Take care.